Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This video module is going to be on, on price discrimination. Actually, it's going to be the first of two video modules on price discrimination. We will take up the uh, simple cases of imperfect uh, uh, price discrimination and perfect price discrimination in this uh, video module. And we'll follow the, uh, this module with another one on market segmentation and pricing in different uh, seg uh, market uh, segments. Uh, there is a really interesting question as to why uh, so many uh, grocery stores uh, sell uh, one can of beans at uh, 30 cents, two cans for 55 cents, and three cans for uh, 75 cents. Uh, the, prob the best answer that you can come up for uh, this kind of uh, price discrimination uh, is uh, that it increases uh, firm uh, profits. And we could show this by simply going to another supply uh, and demand uh, curve. Here the firm could in, has a supply curve and which is equal to the marginal cost curve and a demand curve where it could sell th three cans of beans uh, at a constant price. Uh, that constant price could in fact be uh, 20, uh, 20 cents. If it did that then its total revenues will simply be uh, 60 cents. But if, in fact, the firm can sell three units at 20 cents, it knows that its demand curve is, is downward sloping. And as a consequence, it knows that it can uh, sell one unit for 30 cents. And it can sell a second unit for uh, 25 cents. Which means that uh, if indeed it, it prices its, its can of beans, one can for 30 cents here, uh, two cans for uh, 20, uh, 55 cents, and then three cans for 75 cents, basically what it has done is um, uh, charge different marginal prices. It has raised its uh, revenue from uh, 60 cents, 20 cents times three, selling at a constant price, to 75 cents. And it increases its profits uh, uh, as a consequence. Uh, price discrimination may be a more important uh, uh, influence on that kind of pricing scheme than, uh, than is the cost of production. This kind of pricing scheme is also seen in, in, in uh, soda, sodas that are sold at fast food restaurants. They oftentimes sell. Uh, a, a small drink at a higher unit cost than they do for a uh, larger drink and then an even uh, larger drink. The, there is a decline in the price of the extra uh, ounces that are uh, provided. Now in order for a firm to uh, engage in a price discrimination it must have some monopoly power, that is it must face a downward sloping demand curve and there must not be uh, resale. Uh, otherwise um, uh, you might uh, expect the people who get charged the lower price uh, to sell the units to the people who get charged uh, the, uh, the higher price uh, prices of, for the good. Now we can go back and, and show how a monopolist can indeed uh, increase its, its profits. In past video modules we've demonstrated that a monopolist uh, will have profits equal to ATC1 PM AB but it will have those profits only if it charges a price of PM. It produces quantity QM because it's charging a, a different, uh, it, it, it charges a, a constant price for each given uh, quantity. And this, therefore, is the relevant marginal revenue curve. But let's suppose that the firm engages in uh, perfect uh, price discrimination. That is, it is able to charge a different price for every unit uh, that, it, uh, that it sells. In other words, it can walk people down uh, uh, their demand curve. It charges a price way up here for the first unit sold to some uh, buyer, then this price, then this price, and this price, and so on uh, down the line. How much will the firm, uh, how much will the monopolist uh, sell? Well, if in fact it is charging a different price, for every single unit. The price that it charges for the different units becomes the marginal revenue. And as a consequence, the marginal, uh, the demand curve becomes the marginal revenue curve. We've always said that the firm ought to equate marginal revenue 
uh, with marginal cost. When it's charging a constant price, this is where uh, MC is equal to MR. But when in fact it's charging different prices for each different unit and the demand curve becomes the marginal revenue curve, then this becomes uh, the uh, profit maximizing uh, point of production, which as you will see is equal to the competitive uh, output level. The firm's profits go from a box equal to this to a much more complicated area that's equal to uh, ATC2 uh, and we will call this X uh, down to uh, C and down to D. That is the, the profits the firm will have will be equal to this area. Profits by, by going from charging a constant price its profits go are here it goes to price discrimination its profits go all the way uh, to uh, this area. To be more precise its profits go to this much larger area uh, here. It not only makes uh, more profits but notice it expands uh, the output level too. The inefficiency triangle which we have defined in the past is equal to this kind of triangle that is right here and then here which would be AC uh, we'll have to make this E. That inefficiency triangle is eliminated but it's eliminated of course by transferring more income uh, to uh, uh, to the monopolist. The lesson here is that price discrimination can uh, generate a greater uh, efficiency but there are trade-offs in almost everything. In this case uh, the trade-off is uh, that greater efficiency comes uh, at the cost or, or problem of having more income transferred from consumers uh, to the monopolist. Uh, thank you very much for being with me.